Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Violet. And I'm Ruby. And today we're taking a look at Divinus here. Divinus is a legacy style game in which things will change. You're going to play this game for 12 games, although after those 12 games you can play the eternal game it's called where you just you reset some stuff and you play forever that way. This is a game that needs an app to play it. Um, and there's going to be spoilers. I'm going to try not to spoil too much stuff in the overview, but here's a little bit about how it plays. Okay, let's start by taking a look here at the app. Here's the base game. Start a new campaign. If you already have one, it saves it. Um, so you can start the campaign, and I have the sound turned down, but there's some music. You pick the number of players that you're going to play with, and then it will start telling you how to set up the game. It has these prompts here a lot. Are you certain you want to proceed? Yes. And sometimes it even warns you about things, but it's going to tell you how to do some setup. As the game goes by, different text will happen and different gods will talk to you. And then it will often tell you to read some rules from the rule book or to add different sticker sections to the rule book. This keeps track of your favor. You have favor with the Greeks and with the Norse, and it will show you that, as well as show you your total points that you have overall. And this is the way the app looks like while you're playing the game. Each player is going to be playing a demigod, and you will have a box here. You'll be able to have some special artifacts and special abilities you'll get over the course of the game, some titles, you'll write your name here, and inside you'll have some dice. Now the number of dice you use is determined by the number of players in the game, but on a, you know, when you, at the beginning of a round, you'll roll all your dice. And in the middle of the table here, there's going to be some information. There's going to be some tiles that are drawn from two different stacks of tiles that are placed face up, and these tiles are on top of different numbers that go from 1 to 12, there's going to be at least one god of each pantheon. So in game one, it will be Gaia against Emer, And then some possible quests that you can do. Now what players can do on their turn is they get to do one main action, and then they can do one demigod action. At the beginning of the game, there are very few demigod actions. By the time you get to game 12, there's like six or seven different demigod actions that you can do. What you can do is you can take dice, and you can add or subtract them to claim tiles on the board. You'll claim a tile and you'll put it in front of you. Now when you're putting tiles in front of you, it's like many other tile placement games where you have to match a different terrain types and you are building a 4x4 grid. Once a tile's out, it's kind of stuck there, or at least at the beginning of the game, there are ways to move them out. And some tiles are going to give uh, show icons of the Greeks and the Norse and the Barbarians, which are these gray ones here. And so you're building this out. You are allowed to overlay on top of something else as long as it doesn't mess up what you have in front of you. And when one person finishes their 4x4 grid, the game will end. Now what you can do as you have these dice here, you can also on your turn pull dice off, which will cause new tiles to come out from the stacks. And you'll re-roll the dice and get ready for another turn. The rule book explains how to play, but you can see there are huge sections here that will be covered up with stickers. There's a lot of different sticker sheets in this game. So this is monster. What are monsters? Well, you'll find out as the game goes by. Although there is a section in the back that is um, like a glossary of sorts, and this section does have rules that you might not see, and you're only supposed to look at it when it tells you. The game comes with a lot of stickers. I'm not going to show you the most of the stickers because that would spoil the game. But I do want to be clear that there are stickers, and the game will start out very at the beginning, there are dice stickers where you'll take these stickers off and put them on your dice, customizing your dice. So maybe I'll put a 9 on one side, or one that's a 1 or a 4. There's also going to be stickers that you can put more of these symbols on the board, which will affect things, as well as numbered stickers, which can cause events to happen. The goal of the game is, for each game, is you are trying to meet the different gods' requirements. So this god, for example, wants you to have the most ocean spots and the most mountain spots. And the first person will get favor with that pantheon. Second place gets favor. And this Emir wants the largest water spot and the largest mountain spots. But as the game goes by, there are quests you can fulfill. Like this one here, you need three of these symbols on grass terrain. And whenever you do a quest, this thing will say, 
Okay, so you do a quest, and I did the Gale of Fate quest. Yes, I fulfilled the quest. Who are you? I'm the player Julius, and this choice is irreversible, blah, blah, blah. And then it will, there's some story and things that will happen. Sometimes even that will add new rules into the game. When you find one of those numbers, you can scan it, although frankly, I don't know why you would scan it when it's easier just to type in the number of the tile. But this one is going to say that this, this sticker hasn't been introduced yet because it keeps track of that. But if it does, that can also lead to a story. Eventually, you will finish this scenario, and then it will say who finished the map first because they get one extra point, Julius. And then it will give you some text and it will ask you for each of the gods in the game who scored the different areas. And the gods themselves are fighting and there will be something that happens and is triggered by that. But basically each game is going to be by you placing dice, taking these, and building a 4x4 four four area in front of you. There's going to be variations, the rules are going to get complex, different gods are going to show up with various things that they need done. But that same base game is going to carry you through the whole campaign. All right, so first of all, I want to talk about the components of the game. Um, we'll start with the, the dice and the stickers and all that stuff. This game had some weird sticker a type of sticker that I've never seen before. Yeah. It seemed like the type of sticker where, like, they decided it, it gets really annoying when you put a sticker on wrong and you can't get it off. But this one's, like, super easy to get off. It doesn't fall off easily either. Sure. And they say that if you put a sticker on the sheet and it doesn't, you know, it falls off or on a die or whatever, then stick it back on the sheet because the sheet's clear. I first pulled the sticker off. I was like, oh, no. I took it off the back. But That's what I thought, too. <laughs> Yeah, now the, the stickers that go in the rule book are the same, but the stickers that go in the dice and on the tiles are different. And that's uh, important because sometimes you take stickers off of stuff. Um, and it's they're fine. Yeah, I, I mean, like, dice-wise, putting them on isn't really that annoying since you're constantly taking them off. But the ones on the board? The ones on the board don't stick very well. Um, and on the tiles, not as well as I like to. And in fact, we actually had one sheet of stickers in ours where they weren't die cut. We had to cut them out with scissors. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Which were really hard to peel, that one. And there was one set of stickers where they weren't very sticky either. Um, the dice themselves are big dice. What did you think of the dice? The dice were nice. Yeah, I like the dice. Like, especially how they like, felt and everything. The... The app is going to be a big part of this game. So I want to, it's hard to talk about this without talking about everything in here. So let me tell you where we, are, where we got with the game. We played through seven of the 12 scenarios, and then we opened up and looked at everything else. Why did we not play through all 12? Well, that comes down to gameplay, and we'll get to that in a second. But the app itself has stories. It doesn't read them to you, so you need to read them aloud. Um... And it also has that, you saw in the overview, that button that's like, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure? Which I guess matters, but it did some weird things like in scoring. If you actually press the wrong person, you could restart scoring, but you had to go through the end of scoring and then restart and do all the scoring over again. And there was a couple times we restarted scoring multiple times because we just had the wrong, we put the wrong person's name in for something. Yeah. Um, but what did you think about the theme of this game? The app with the theme and the story. I didn't realize there was a theme until like three games in. Well, I mean, you knew there was gods fighting each other. Well, yes. I guess. I didn't know anything about the story, though. I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because of my bad reading skills? No. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just a bunch of gods going to war and we're helping them out. Even if we're crossing sides several times and they don't seem to care about that. Ever. Yeah, it's really... I got to say, for me, the story's a huge weak point in this game. All the gods seem to have... I mean, did you feel like any god had a different personality? Maybe Loki? Yeah, but yeah. he also felt really fake. It looks like they took the stereotype of Loki. It was just like, yeah, that's Loki. Put him in the game. Yeah, all the gods are just kind of talking. Some of them even had modern language. Um, like they Yo, were, buddy. <laughs> yeah, like weird stuff. And I just thought the writing, it was boring... And 
just not, I mean, it just also was, it was long-winded, and there wasn't anything unique about it. You have Greeks fighting yeah. the Vikings, which is kind of cool to see the guys go up against each other, but never once did I think it mattered. But I think the point of that is, oh, well, there is one thing that was interesting. Every once in a while, you come across something, and it gives you a choice. Like, hey, you, you found a... Uh, a lowly peasant girl. I mean, that's fair, but by also, dragon. unless we miraculously pick the right answer every single time, it never really felt like there were any consequences to those choices. Yeah, so we've been playing other games, like we're playing Seventh Citadel right now at the same time, and that game feels like there's consequences for your choices, right? Yeah. Yes. This game really didn't. It's like, there's a there's a girl. Do you want to save her or not save her? It doesn't really seem like... Eh, I, or like, there's something like, treasure chest, open it or not, and you're like, well, I guess I'll open it, right? And you know? I mean, some players complain a bit more than others about having to save someone. Well, no, that's a different game. You're getting mixed up. <laughs> All but, right, fine. Um, okay, so that's, I thought the theme is not that interesting. It didn't really come through, and they introduced mechanisms later on. Um, this is the tiniest of spoilers, but because you can see them in the rule book, Heroes and Monsters, and I didn't think they added to the theme at all. I forgot they were there the entire time. Well, you, you can't forget the monsters because they, they're, they're there. Do, but, oh, but did not it the feel like Did it feel like the monsters were different or did anything, really? No. They did not feel like much of a threat. You could replace their names with pretty much anything, and it wouldn't have changed it. Okay, so let's talk, though, about the game. The game is building a 4x4 four four grid, and you're trying yeah. to score points because the gods have different victory conditions, blah, blah, blah. What did you think about that part? I'm putting the dice out and taking the tiles. I mean, that was probably my favorite part of the game. Well, good, because it is the game. <laughs> well, yes, obviously. Uh, I don't know. I, I really like building games where you have to figure out, like, a map, uh, like, a, what was the game called? Land or Sea? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, obviously I liked it. Like, you changed up the dies so that you would get more options and then you would get extremely angry whenever anyone took your tile that you wanted, <laughs> which happened quite a bit. Well, it's his fault for out loud saying what tile he wanted. Each time it came out, he's like, ooh, that looks good. And then you just take it. <laughs> okay, first of Anyways, all. Anyways, I think we're starting to realize who takes the tiles more than others. <laughs> uh, yeah, but okay, so the, the system itself is fine. Use yeah. dice to put them there, add and subtract to take the stuff. You get really cool dice, you get a nine or like a, a, a three six, and it can be a three or a six, and then there's other things that the dice can do. My concern was, I thought game one, the very first game we played, was so boring. Yeah, yeah. it felt like a tutorial. Like, really boring, and then game two, I was like, oh, it's a little more interesting. There's more ways to score, more things to do. We put stickers on the dice. But a lot of times you put stickers on stuff and they're like, you get to see that next game. And I was like, oh, oh okay. You know, not as exciting, you know, for this game. Also, there was a couple games where when we did something, it was like, now put these 700 stickers in the rule book. Like, I've, I had to pause the game for <laughs> long periods of time putting out this stuff. Oh, especially if I with that one page size sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that you in still this didn't game. Fit that in well. There's a lot of like pausing and putting a whole lot of rules and adding rules, but the rules are all about building that four by four grid. It's have a bunch of things that are two sized, and and you might have seen in the overview. There's these magic things and stuff gets added to that, but it's again, it's. Build a three mountain, build a two mountain, build a four mountain with three Greeks in it, build a Greek over here, do this. It's, it's always, it felt like every game was the exact same, just a different new rule on how you put these four by four tiles together. And sometimes, I, I, near, I mean, getting to the end, it was getting to be like so many things to think about every time you put out a tile, you just couldn't keep track of all of them, I thought. Yeah. That's why you stick to like two things and completely forget about everything else Especially and then ruin abilities. your final scoring. Um, you know those like um, artifacts that you guys, did you guys use any of them because... What artifacts? Oh, she did. She had some great artifacts. What artifacts? The things that you put on the back of the box. No, well, not even. We got one of the oh, entire yeah. game. I, I used like one of them a few times. Well, no, you had the one that said oh, every yeah. time you rerolled your dice, you could reroll two of them. Yeah, but that's really easy to remember. I don't think I ever used the other oh, one. I, um, would this like the upgrade be part of a spoiler? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not really a spoiler. But you can put stickers it's on the back of the box, mechanic. and you can upgrade them. And 
Violet just had such bad luck. I kept getting stickers that weren't up. Why was that an option? That they couldn't be like, upgrade? Hey, upgrade one of your stickers. And she always had stickers that were not upgradable. <laughs> that like, happened to you a lot. I never even got the upgrade one. I just had... I, I didn't know upgrading was and an option like, until oh, she complained about it. Have your dice back. We're sorry. Yeah, so... I don't think it's a bad game for me. For me, I don't think yeah. it's bad. I, I thought it was interesting. It's just that I'm, I'm done with it. I don't want to put these tiles in a 4x4 four four grid anymore. I've done it seven times throughout this game. And another problem I have with the game is I never know ever who's winning. It's almost always a surprise at the end of the... I mean, sometimes you can kind of guess. Yeah, like... But, but I'm like, uh, I think you're winning. I'm winning. I don't know, you know. Honestly, uh, I just assume anyone who gets close to the end is winning. And also, we like kept trading on and off who was winning. Like at the end, when we done, we were like one point apart, pretty much. It was so it's so balanced in some ways that I never felt like I did anything really that cool. Um, I think some people are going to really like this game and they're going to play through twelve games and then play that Eternal game forever, which is okay. The Eternal game does not have. The missions, which were my favorite part, or the things that you find, the stickers, it just, you build the grid and follow the rules. Um, what would you give it for final scores and thoughts? I thought it was okay. I mean, I do like the building aspect. The stories were a little boring. Probably a six. Okay. Yeah, I'd also give it a six. I like the art. The stories were a bit meh. I did like the building portion, especially since you could, like, you know, cut over cover something in case you wanted to change something later so because you couldn't finish your grid without like a one singular piece that would be very difficult to find it's very easy to sure and you can over you can cover up another tile yes so i liked all the like abilities and new rules that were added although i would occasionally forget some stuff that i had but over it was an okay game i it was fine so six yeah six and that's where i'm at too I don't dislike it. I got I was bored with it at points, and I was really tired of adding rule stickers. So when you play legacy games, sometimes a legacy game has something in the middle of the game that's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this happened. This game does not have one of these. In fact, at the end of game one, they pretend that something like, can you believe this just happened? And we were like, that's yeah, fine, I don't care. After the gods fought, Oh. They were like, can you believe this? And we were like, yes. Who cares? And I we mean, moved on. It, it was not that big of a deal, I thought. Yeah, like, man. And all the stories, they're like, you go fight a monster. You beat the monster. You go rescue some people. There's some skeletons. It, nothing was ever like, wow, what what just happened? It, so, but if, so the stories, this is from the same guy who did uh, the game uh, Destiny's, and I really like Destiny's story. Not, oh. not, not in this one. And I thought that the game itself, building a 4x4 grid, there's tons of games that do that. So this one changing as the game goes by. My favorite part was modifying the dice. You know, but there's still dice, and you roll the dice and see what happens. And you can manipulate your dice a bit, but eh, it's, it's fine. So uh, the Dice Tower has a, some more copies of this game, and some of the other folks here in the studio will be playing it. So maybe they'll come to different opinions than us. But for us, it is three okays across the board. That's Divinus. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Violet. And I'm Ruby. Who was winning at the end of it anyway? I think it was me, right? Yeah. I thought it was Violet. No, it was Daddy. Okay. Yes.